We're going to get started at 12 o'clock, but let me know if you can hear me. Uh, if you can, give me a thumbs up. All right, we are live. <laughs> we are live. Welcome, welcome. Let me know you can hear me. People are streaming in. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me where you are from. I'm in sunny Southern California. Right, we are live. <laughs> um, we let are me live. turn off, <laughs> turn that off there. I'm from sunny Southern California, just moved here uh, about three months ago. So I'm new here. So if anyone is from the West Coast, tell me in the comments your favorite place to go because I need some ideas here. Um, so we are uh, going to be uh, creating this beautiful watercolor portrait. Um, I'm going to let a few, give it a few more minutes for people to stream in here. And I'm going to set up comments so I can see all your comments here. And let's see here. And we're going to get started in a couple minutes here. Let me get this together here so I can see all your comments. <laughs> ah. And let's see here. Okay. I don't want to hear my voice though. There we go. All right. So, oh, we got Colorado. Um, someone's from San Diego. Yes. I love the East Coast, so if you're from the East Coast, I love you as well. I actually left at a good time because the winter I hear is pretty harsh out there, um, but I am excited. So we are, it's about 12 o'clock, it's nine o'clock in the morning for me, so I have my tea. Um, you guys, if you're on the East Coast, you probably have your uh, lunch or whatever, but we're gonna get started. My name is Krista. I am a full-time artist that specializes in pretty much everything, mostly oils and pastels and mixed media, painting portraits. A lot of my focus is women of color and hair. That's a big fo focus in a lot of my art. Um, but today we're going to play with watercolor. Uh, I was really excited when Sketchy uh, reached out to me. Actually, let me change my camera so you can see me. <laughs> there we go. Much better. So you can see me close up. I was really excited when Sketchy reached out to me to say, hey, you want to do a class for the 30 faces, 30 days portrait challenge. Um, I immediately said yes. I've been using Sketchy forever, um, uh, utilizing their photo references and taking a bunch of their classes. So I love Sketchy. I have to admit, I probably have about 800 photos saved in my Sketchy app. I don't know how many you have, but I do have a lot uh, with the anticipation that I will draw all of them at some point in time. Um, so, uh, have you signed up for the challenge yet? Have you started it yet? If you're still thinking about it, um, I'm going to share a little video with you to uh, uh, get you in and inspired and motivated to join this watercolor gouache challenge. Um, and then I'm going to kind of go into what we're going to be doing today, this Saturday uh, in Sketchy Live. All right, let me get this going. All right, so if you're motivated, inspired by that, definitely sign up. Use my promo code to get $5 off, 30F30D, Krista. So Krista, make sure you spell it right. It is C-H-R-I-S-T-A. Um, so use that, sign up, and take this challenge. Um, I, am, I struggle with challenges. The best part of it is you get lifetime access to all these courses for 30 
portraits that you get lifetime access to. So definitely sign up and check it out. I have a class coming up later this month, so I am happy to uh, to share with you. I'm just going to look at somebody asked a question about pastels. So yes, I love working in pastels. I actually use watercolors in that process. So uh, if uh, Sketchy ever wants to do a pastel class, we can do that. That's a lot of fun. Um, looking at some, we've got Canada and looking at Oz, I'm going to try to answer all your questions along the way. I'll kind of stop and take a break and try to answer all your questions. Um, so ask away um, and let's go over what we're going to be creating today. So you see in the screen there, that's Tatiana. What a beautiful face. I saw this on uh, while I was scrolling through the app and I look at this face. She is gorgeous and look at her hair. I am, you know, because I'm such a hair person painting wise, I was drawn to her hair. So I'm just going to switch, switch the screen and go to my setup here. And I'm just going to going over, um, some of the materials that I use in my process. Um, and I have my little picture of Tatiana here, which is beautiful. She is gorgeous. Um, so today um, we are going to do what I call a study, a watercolor study. So again, I am primarily, I work in oil and pastels, um, but I have found and learned the hard way that it's a lot easier to... Um, plan out my painting before I get to my easel and start breaking out the oils. So I've learned to create by planning it out and creating studies, a bunch of them. I'll do about four or five of them before I get started. And I found that watercolors are a great way to do that. I can play around the, with the composition. I can get to know my subject um, because I don't know uh, Tatiana personally, um, I have to get intimate with her face and really get to uh, understand the uniqueness and all the uniqueness that calls her her and just kind of understand how to solve problems and resolve the issues before I get to the easel. So that's what I usually do. I'll sit here and I will work using watercolors to kind of plan out my uh, composition, plan out what I'm going to be doing. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. I'm going to try to finish within the hour. I'm going to try to kind of go really slow. Um, I'm not really worried about perfect. I'm not worried about pretty. What I'm worried about now is really getting to understand my subject and looking at it and getting an idea of how to deal with certain issues. And there's some issues in this photo that I will need to um, understand. For one, I'll, I'll just yell it out right now. It's very dark in her neck. You see how you've got her face shape and then you've got this dark uh, neck area there. I don't want to make that you know, too dark. I need to know how to deal with that because if I make it too dark, it will look like a hole that's happening in her, in her neck there. So this is a great space to play and to really figure out how to resolve those issues. So in front of me, you notice I've pre-sketched my subject just so I can get a good clean sketch and I can spend more time dealing with the painting part of it. I have a selection of watercolors here. I also have um, some really bright colors because I want to deal with that hair. I want to play around with the hair. I have some pinks and purples in here that I'll be using um, as well. I have, I don't get too fancy with watercolor brushes. I've got like three different sizes here in round. Um, you know, I, it's really just a study. Uh, I might even get an even smaller brush, but I'll stick with the big for now so I can stay expressive. I also have, let me get in here. I like to use um, watercolor pencils. Um, and I like to use them because this is where I can have control. <laughs> And I have a love-hate relationship with watercolors because sometimes watercolors want to do their own thing. And I'm, 
you know, a control. I like to control what's happening. So whenever I feel like I'm losing control, I break out the watercolor pencils so I can get control. And then I can activate them with water if I need to. So I'm gonna utilize the watercolor pencils. I'm actually gonna start with that. I also have a white gel pen that I, if you know that if I want to add any highlights I like to use I've got a black marker here um, for the end if I want to kind of add any um, you know darks, dark darks or just kind of emphasize areas and then I have this fun little um, this Tombow marker which I love because it is it activates and it acts like watercolor so and I've got this fun little uh, fuchsia color that I want to play with in the hair so I've got that there too and I'm just going to put this all to the side so I have it another thing that I use again my love-hate relationship with watercolors because mistakes happen and I make mistakes and I, I try my best to keep the white of the paper as my highlight um, but of course, acrylic, I mean, watercolors will have a mind of its own. Um, this is kind of a workhorse in my uh, creative process when I do mixed media and pastels. Um, this is acrylic white ink. So I will use this. I have really haven't uh, been successful using white watercolor paint, um, but I have usually will use this if I wanna add some highlights or if I wanna fix areas that got a little too out of, you know, a little too crazy. Then I have a glass of water. All right, so I am ready to get started. I'm gonna to check to see if I have any questions. Um, ooh, we have someone from France, wow. Um, <laughs> and that's why you love watercolor pencils, yes. Um, it is a way I need to have control whenever I'm creating. So this is my control. It's it's all I got here. All right, so before I get started, like I said, this is my study. Um, I like to look at my muse um, in different ways because this is the time where I'm getting to know who I'm painting. And because I don't, I don't have her in front of me. I don't know her personally. So I don't know all the uniqueness. I don't know her personality. Um, I don't know. So I have to get to know her through the screen here. So some great ways uh, to get to know my subject is to print it out in different ways. So occasionally I will, I'll, I'll print it out in black and white. It allows my eye to see the values, and we all know the values are really, really important. It's important to see the lights, the darks, and the midtones. So I will print this out in black and white, and I will also print it out in this, uh, I think it's pronounced posturized view. It's an app that I have. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure how to do it on Photoshop. I think it's a few bunch of clicks. But this way I get to see, it, it's like a color by numbers. I actually really get to see the relationships. Um, and here, even in here, I can see how to resolve the neck area. You can actually break this out into several like values and you actually get to really get intimate and get to see. And this helps me learn how to deal with issues that come from painting from a photograph. So this is a great uh, tool to use as well. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get going because I we don't have all day and I'd love to paint with you all day. Um, I'm gonna clear out my space here. Um, I'll tell you what colors I'm using when I get to that. But right now I'm just gonna use a watercolor pencil. And this is the I like using these pencils. It's a Derwent Inktense pencil. It's probably my favorite. The color is Saddle Brown. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at my photo reference and I'm just gonna kind of trace. This is my intimate time with my subject. I'm gonna get to know her and just kind of go in, fill in those areas that are shading. 
how to fill in, look at, look at my subject and just kind of get to know her. And because I like the pencils, because I have control, I get a better understanding. And I learn everything I need to learn about my subject. There's areas in here like this, the mouth area, that the relationship with the mouth, it's really important because it adds to her expression. And I wanna be able to capture that when I go forth and do, you know, put it on a canvas. So I gotta know how to, you know, I don't wanna make it so dark that it looks black or it just kind of looks weird. So, you know, I need to get to know how to deal with that. And I always say, I always tell my students, painting is a series of problems. You know, when you get to your easel, it's a series of problems and you need to learn how to solve all those, all those problems. So understanding how to solve all the problems in painting when you are creating, you know, is really important because when you know how to solve them, you know how to start a new painting, you know how to deal with it. Um, so that's where I am now. I try not to dive too deep into my painting. I try to get to know it. And I find that a doing a watercolor study, just kind of playing, playing with the hair, playing with my composition. Is this gonna work or do I need to make the face bigger? I do another study there to kind of get a good understanding. And I'm just lightly using the pencil to kind of get my composition going here. I'm excited to play with her hair because I really like that fuchsia color. I don't think I would ever do that with my hair, but um, I think that's awesome there. Now I'm going to take a look at those darks in her cheeks and I'm just going to kind of lightly look at the shape of this, the dark in her cheek. And I'm just gonna look at it. I'm gonna, just gonna try to lightly sketch it in because it's important because the these darks, these shading in there, she's kind of, her the corners of her lips are kind of piercing upward or, and I wanna be able to tell that story um, of what she's kind of saying in this picture. You know, what was she thinking about? So I want to try to get that there. So I'm going to lightly add that shading in there. I forgot to do that eye. And there's definitely, of course, the shading under the eye and very lightly just getting getting a feel for my subject. And there's definitely a lot more shadow on this side of the face and then a little bit here. And then All right. So I've I've kind of played around with the pencil. Best part of the pencil is I can activate it with water. So I'm just going to take my brush. And this is my lesson in patience here. This is where I take time and I start activating that pencil. And I'm just going in and activating it slowly. I've got paper towel in my hand too. So I'm always kind of wiping my brush and then I'm using the side of my brush to just kind of add some shading in there. Looking at my photo, creating a, using water, not too much. I don't want to fully saturate. And I'm just kind of slowly going in there and adding shape, trying my best to keep the white of the paper as the highlights 
trying. That's not always easy. You know, watercolor can be really tough. It can be really frustrating if, you know, you're just starting out. But when you really learn to, you know, embrace it, when you learn to let watercolors kind of do their thing, it's so much fun and so beautiful. And I just love how the the surprises i love the texture and you know the things that you can do with watercolor um you know with salt and spraying water i mean there's so many fun things that you can do with watercolor um that you can't do with acrylic i guess i don't know i find it you know very freeing um flowy very intuitive um, so I really enjoy, I've learned to love watercolors as long as I have some sort of control when I need it. <laughs> and I'm just kind of moving my brush, going slow. I'm not rushing through this process. I have all the time in the world, really. All I'm doing is trying to get to know my subject, get to know Tatiana get to know what makes her unique, the uniqueness of her face there. And I'm just gonna kinda just get in the eyes here. That's not the color of her eyes, but I'm just kinda using this. This is kind of like my underpainting there. And there I go, I have just a first layer um, of my study there and this got a little too dark here. I didn't want it to be so dark now that I look at it All right, I'm gonna see if I have any questions here um, Let me know if you have any questions along the way. Thank you. Thank you um, And I'm gonna add a layer to her hair. This is where I'm gonna have fun um, because I don't have to copy the photo. I can have a lot of fun and play. And a lot of times when I use Sketchy, I, I totally kind of transform the hair. Um, so this is where I have fun. I love playing with hair. So I'm gonna go in with my watercolor. So let me just tell you the colors that I'm using here. I have yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, um, transparent red oxide. I have an ultramarine blue in there. I have a dark brown called sepia, and then I have Payne's gray. So those are the colors that I'm using. I keep it pretty simple. And I'm gonna take some of that Payne's gray, and I'm gonna take some of that sepia brown. I'm gonna mix that together. I'm okay with, you know, not mixing it completely. I'm okay with some inconsistencies here and I want it pretty light. And I'm just gonna do a first layer here. I'm using a bigger brush here because I, I just wanna get coverage. But I'm, and I'm using the side of my brush and then occasionally I'll pick up just and use the tip of the brush to add some detail there. Now I know this has to get a lot darker. Um, and the thing with watercolors, it all depends on what surface you're using, what type of watercolors you're using. I'm not even looking at the photo. I'm just kind of making my own hair here. <laughs> um, it dries a lot lighter. So keep, take that into account, you know, that you're just building up to the dark. Um, and once I learn that, because usually when I work in oil, you know, I start dark and I work up to the light. And it's really hard when you're an oil painter to change that way of thinking. So I had to really, um, a lot of failures happen for me to finally feel comfortable with watercolors. Now I'm reaching into my little palette here with these bright pinks um, and I'm just gonna go for it here and I'm just gonna let it flow. 
letting it blend in a bit with some of that darker, that Payne's gray and brown mixture. Um, letting some texture, some fun watercolor texture happen. I might even go ahead because I'm in the mood to go ahead and maybe add some splatter as well because it's just fun. <laughs> Sometimes I'll take a spray bottle, I'll spray, I don't have enough space here to really kind of spray out, but I'll take a spray bottle and I'll let the watercolor follow that path of the spray bottle. So I'll play around like that as well. And oh, I'm just gonna do some tapping there and that'll add to her hair there. And I'm just, this is, can be so relaxing. I can spend hours playing with her hair there, which is a lot of fun there. Um, I think I'll leave the, maybe I'll kind of just do a small, I'm gonna just get like this indigo color just to, add a small indication of a shirt that shirt there, but I'm not too worried about that. I'll just let it be abstract. All right, ooh, this is fun. You can even get a spray bottle and spray for some texture there. I'm gonna even, I'm gonna pull up my smaller brush here and oop, and I don't mind if I've splattered. I'm just gonna get some straggly hairs here. Her hair's growing as we speak. <laughs> it might end up taking up the entire page. I'm a big fan of painting curly hair. <laughs> Um, so I don't normally paint a lot of straight hair. Usually it's like curly hair, but her hair is starting to grow. <laughs> Let me get some more of that dark in there, that Payne's gray in there. And I'm just going to kind of wet on wet, let it kind of blend in there. Getting some darks in there. I'm just playing here and then letting it dry to see what happens. Look at that. I think she needs some more splatter. I'm put some splatter up there. <laughs> just fun, fun, fun. Just kind of playing. This is where you can tap into your four-year-old self and splatter. I love what's happening right here. I love that. that those are the things that I love about watercolor. Um, this effect here, which I didn't intend, but I love when stuff like that does happen. All right, so I'm gonna let just kind of that hair dry. I had some fun there creating you know, a very abstract, fun, loose um, feel to the hair. And I'll continue to add additional layers to that. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I'm, when I go in to create on my canvas, you know, I will might just let her hair just fly outward. Um, and those are the things where I can practice here. And that's what I like doing. Um, let me see if I have any questions. Um, <laughs> mental dark light to dark and dark to light mental switches yes <laughs> it's really tough and sometimes i forget when i'm working in watercolor and i get so dark so soon and i end up feeling like i get stuck because once you get too dark you can't go back um so I, I really try to work slowly in layers. That's why I find starting off with the colored, uh, the watercolor pencil works for me um, because I have so I have control. All right, so 
let's see here so I'm just gonna go in and I'm using some yellow ochre and alizarin crimson and a little bit of the transparent red oxide and I'm just gonna go in and just kind of slowly very I just actually wanted a little bit browner sometimes it helps to have a little kind of um, swatch of oop that didn't work a swatch of watercolor paper next to you to kind of test it out that got too dark but I'll use that later I just want a touch of that to neutralize it so it's not so orangey um, I'm just gonna test on the neck that works <laughs> and I'm just gonna go into those areas I don't have a lot of watercolor paint on my brush and my brush isn't highly saturated so I can just go in there and if I feel like it's too much and I'm losing control <laughs> I just use my I wipe my brush with the paper towel and I just move whatever paint is wet on my surface I just move that around and I'm just going in those areas that are in shadow. This would be a good time to look at the black and white photo because you can see it a lot better. Um, you can see those areas of shadow. And just going slow, going slow. Um, if I want to blend a bit, I'll just kind of clean my brush, add a little bit of water to my brush, and just massage that brush in so it's not such a harsh transition. And I'll slowly kind of work this next value working my way looking at my photo that's why the black and white photo is a lot easier to look at when you're doing this going slow because when something happens I don't like I can quickly quickly adjust just kind of slowly blending it in trying my best to keep the white of the paper as my highlight. I try. And just kind of going through, this area is kind of scaring me. It's so dark. So I'm gonna take my time there because I feel like if I get too dark too soon, I'll, I'll, I'll lose the ability to play with it. And I'm just kind of going around here. A little bit of water, playing with the water. I have paper towel handy if I need it. And just kind of looking at my subject here and kind of creating kind of a value sketch there. This neck area here, I'm gonna make it a little darker. bit of water like so and just kind of taking a look here taking a look at you know my photo taking a look at um, her face here and you know right here I need to really kind of build up here this is this is an area right here. There's an area right here, the shadow, and here where there's so much shadow in there that is contributing to the uniqueness of her face, but also contributing to her expression um, that I want to capture. Um, so I'm gonna take my time there. Um, I'm just kind of going in there, just further emphasizing 
the dark areas and getting to know Tatiana, getting to know her face here. And I'll let that sit, I'll let it dry. Um, a lot of times I like to work, um, I like to let each layer dry. I don't like to constantly build, build up wet layers. Um, Cause then I can, I again, that gives me a little bit more control. So if you're working wet on wet, you run the risk of these fun little things that happen. Sometimes I don't want them to happen all, you know, down the, across the, uh, right down the middle of the face. So I, you know, slow down, especially when I start getting darker there, but um, it's looking good. I know that now that I step back and observe, I know that I need to deal with these areas. This has to get darker um, so that the expression comes out. All right, I'm gonna take stops and see, look at some questions here. Um, I have, Timothy asked me, do you start with multiple sketches so that you have several to play with? Yes, I spend a lot of time um, either with charcoal. I'll, I'll spend a lot more time sketching, um, planning out than I do in, in painting at my easel. So here I might do this like four or five times, sometimes even more. And I'll actually play around with sketching the face so that I can understand how to deal with certain areas. So I do play around. I have a sketchbook where I will sit there and get all the kinks out, get that all out first before I start painting. Um, and I'll have several sketches of the same thing. Some look really funky, some look good. And then I pick the best one out of all of them. Um, and the name of the app I use to create the, the image, um, I think it's called Poster Shine. I think that's the name of it. Um, and it works really well. You can break it down into just two values or two colors, or you can break it down to uh, like several. And I use this a lot. I find it really helpful in understanding my subject. Um, liking the paper towel dab. Yes, paper towel is definitely uh, something I have in my hand because I don't ever want to have too much paint on my brush or too much water on my brush because you know, I want to, I do want to maintain control as much as I can, even though watercolor will want to do their thing every once in a while, just like right there. <laughs> um, yes, using a black and white reference is really, really helpful. Um, it helps you see, it helps you see differently, helps you see as an artist. Sometimes the color photo can be deceiving. Um, just like that neck area to me is, you know, when I'm looking at it color, it looks, it's too black. Um, so, you know, as an artist, when you're painting that, you definitely want to resolve that. You don't want to make it too dark. Um, it is, the paper is Canson watercolor sketch. I like using it. It's like a, it's cold press. I like because it's kind of heavy. Um, and it's a good practice paper because it's inexpensive. Um, and I think because you can get it at the craft store and it's usually on sale. So I do use this paper a lot. I also use this paper to make my own sketchbooks. It's a great sketchbook paper um, to use for mixed media and so forth. So yes, this is Canson, um, the XL watercolor paper. Um, and let's see any, um, all right, so let's continue. I think she's dried just a bit more. There's two ways I can um, tackle this painting. I can go back in with the um, watercolor pencils or I can go back in with watercolor. I can do either or. I'm just gonna do, cause I, I made this color. <laughs> so I'm gonna use it. And I just mix the, I. I you know, it's kind of like a free for all here. I did a yellow ochre. I had put alizarin crimson. I had a little bit of the red oxide and then I wanted to kind of knock it down so it wasn't so orangey with the Payne's gray and it, it was too much, but it's a good dark. And I'm just gonna test it out in the side of the neck there. That's usually what I do. 
And I'm just gonna go, I'm using a smaller brush. This is the nerve wracking period here because I don't wanna mess it up. And I'm just going in, looking at my photo, and I'm just going in and getting in the darks, slowly. taking my time <laughs> and just kind of looking, looking at, I love her lips. I love the shape of her lips and I love the bottom lip. She's got a full bottom lip there. So I always find, um, usually when I'm looking for photos to paint on sketchy, I stick with the same people. There's a, there's a few people that I love painting. Um, and I've actually painted them several times. And um, I've actually become friends with them because I paint them so much. Um, because there's certain, and usually when I'm looking through the, the hundreds of photos that people post, I'm always looking for unique features. I'm not looking for a perfect model that's, you know, perfectly, um, you know, airbrushed and, you know, it's got all these perfect features. I'm looking for unique features. I'm looking for things that make them unique. Um, and that's what draws me to some of the amazing photos that are posted on Sketchy. Um, so I love using it. <laughs> So I'm just going in slowly. I don't want to get too dark because I don't, I don't want to get to the point of no return, you know, in, in my work here. So I'm just kind of slowly, the, these areas here are scaring me. I'm going to go in and just a little bit, uh, just a little bit. <laughs> I can continuously add additional layers, let it dry and add some more layers there. Looking at it, stepping back and observing, just making sure it's going in the direction. I guess I need to create more paint here. And I'm just kind of darkening the neck. The neck is gonna take some time. I'm. You know, this is where I kind of play and practice. How dark do I want this neck to get? You know, I don't want it to look like a hole. And I can take some little bit of water, wipe it with the paper towel and just kind of blend a bit there. And she's coming together. She's starting to come together. I'm, I'm getting a good sense of areas that I need to look at. I need to be careful with, I need to resolve, you know, and I'm getting a sense of her um, and how I would kind of go about painting her. Um, I'm just gonna work the lips a little bit here and so forth. And then, let me play with the hair a little bit more. And I'll take some of the paint there. I'm using a smaller brush and just playing here. I'm gonna show you the how I love to play with the Tombow marker too. I'm just kind of using, I have this indigo color and I just want to use it. I know it's not the color of our hair, but I think it's pretty. <laughs> In there. And I think it goes well with that, that pink there. Or the fuchsia. fuchsia. And I'll kind of smudge some of that in the neck there. So I can slowly build up that dark, slowly, and I just don't wanna jump right into it. 
All right, so I'm gonna, where's my marker here? My Tombow marker here. So this is, this is really fun um, that I like to play around with, uh, especially in mixed media. And what I like about them is they behave like watercolor. So I can just kind of get some lines in there, get my brush, add water, and activate. <laughs> and they're just so, you know, the, the markers are just so bold. Look at that. That is so much so much fun you can even with these things I have watercolor on there you can actually kind of add some to your palette there look at that and use it as watercolor as well um, there are several ways to use these things um, and I love playing with them again I get control and they add some really fun Fun ways just other new tools that you can use in your process there now I would let this dry completely what I would do to finish the hair is I'd probably take out a, um, a white gel pen and add some line work I'd probably do that but gel pens don't like to work on wet surfaces so I would let that dry completely um, so I'm gonna I'm going to play around with that, um, you know, I'm going to let this dry completely and I'm going to do a little bit of line work so you can see how I can, can play there. But I'm just going to go in and just kind of let that hair go there. So much fun. A little bit more here. Get the red, add some red in there. Um, so you can have watercolor is really fun to play with hair. Um, and let me check any questions. Um, let's see. That's how you use it. Tombows are amazing. Um, and um, the Derwent Inktense pencils are also um, really fun to work with. So I'm going to just kind of... Um, I would actually, if I was really spending about, really spending time with this and sitting here all day, I would actually continue to build up my uh, values and build up my face. But um, we have, uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to just kind of bring in my um, pencils, my watercolor pencils here. And I'm just going to get, I'm going to go back to that willow Actually, this, saddle, this is willow. This is a little bit darker. And I'm going to go in and just get in some of the dark darks. Like I said, I would probably, I wouldn't get into the dark darks quite just yet. I'd probably still kind of start building up. I'd let, let each layer kind of dry before I moved on to the next value. Um, and if we were doing this, we had all day to play here, I would probably do that. I'd, I'd take a little bit more time before I got really dark. Um, but what I like about the pencils is I can shade with it. I'm just going to get my lighter one because I think that's a little too, too orangey. I can roll it around. That got a little too dark. And if I need to activate it with water, I can, you know, I can kind of activate it or I can leave it. The texture that the pencils leave is beautiful. I can slowly build up these shadows in the cheek area. as well slowly right it would be slow just so I don't get myself too too dark too fast so 
So I love playing around with those. Sometimes I'll take, if something gets too, too dark, I got a, I took a white pencil here. This area right here got a little too dark. Uh, so I'm going to let that dry there. So I will kind of go in with my watercolor pencils. I have an even darker brown here. I'm going to actually get this dark in this deep indigo to get in the eyes and the nostrils. And then the eyebrows here are a little bit darker. I can even go ahead and hair is still a little too wet, but I can go in and draw in strands of hair in the hair area. The key for me is to slow down, practice patience and slow down. That's the key for me um, in really embracing and enjoying the process with watercolors. If I, fi I find that if I go too quickly, <laughs> um, I find that I get myself stuck really quick. So I slow down work my way up, work my way up to the dark areas. Um, and I will probably, you know, I, like I said, I probably would have waited a little bit longer. I'd let this dry a little bit before I got into those dark, dark areas. Like in this neck area, I'll probably wait for that to completely dry before I go in with a darker, a darker layer. Um, and I just want to play. I want to play with her hair more than anything. I can't help it. <laughs> and I wish we had longer to play here because I would really start adding some detail to the hair. Let me see if the gel pen, ah, it works a little bit. And I would definitely go in and add some hair strands with my white gel pen as well, just to add some you know, interest, something different, something fun. <laughs> Let me show you my acrylic ink. And I just want to kind of show you um, the acrylic white ink. Um, and I can't remember if I introduced that in my supplies. So if I did not introduce that in my supplies, um, I'm introducing it now. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I like using acrylic white ink um, if I make a mistake. And I think I did. Did I mention it? I can't remember. <laughs> it's my whiteout. It's my safety net. It's, you know, if areas like this happen, I don't want that to happen. I can clean up my background. It also helps me. It doesn't necessarily erase things, but it just kind of helps me smooth out. Maybe I want to smooth out areas and maybe I want to add highlights and maybe I want to fix areas. So I'm just going to pour this. I use it a lot, so I've clogged up the top of it. I've never really been successful with white acrylic ink, the white watercolor paint. I've never really been successful with it. I find white watercolor paint looks chalky. I find white in watercolors altogether look chalky, but I'm not perfect. And sometimes I make mistakes and sometimes I lose um, my way. And I just have kind of like a fail safe um, that I can utilize if I need to, but I try to use it sparingly. So I can use the acrylic white ink to add the highlights in the eyes. I can do that. I can go ahead and add the highlights in the nose area. I can reshape areas um, if they didn't work. I can go ahead and do some line work. This is pretty opaque. 
I still love my white gel pen, but um, I can utilize my white acrylic ink. You definitely want to clean your brushes thoroughly after you do this because <laughs> they do dry. It does dry. Um, and I can go into areas. I'm pretty happy with where stuff is right now. I'm happy with my highlight areas. I probably just need to let it dry, but sometimes I'll go in the, you know, if I want to soften this area, you've got these really sharp changes in values. And sometimes I just want to soften it. I'll add a little bit um, to my brush, a little bit uh, of the white acrylic ink to my brush, and then I'll just kind of lightly tap it in there and let it blend in again. I use it sparingly because I find white just looks chalky, but you notice the difference here. I just added a little bit of that white there and it's almost softened up a bit um, where compared to here, it's a little, you can see the harder contrast here of the light to the, the other value. So I use it very lightly. I try to not, I try not to use it too much. I have very little on my brush because too much just makes it, her face ends up looking really powdery. <laughs> um, it doesn't look right. So you just wanna use it a little bit and it's just, it just makes me feel comfortable that it's there so that if I do make a mistake that I can, I can adjust, I do have an ability to adjust. So even if you're working in watercolors and you feel like, you know, you've, you can't adjust anything, there are ways to adjust and kind of, um, not necessarily completely fix it, but there are ways to kind of add, you know, little, little tips that you can do to kind of slightly fix it. It doesn't go away. It's hard to erase mistakes here. It's hard for me to erase this. I guess I could, but it would look really funny. Um, but I can cover it up and make it and smudge it and make it into something else, I guess. Um, but it makes me feel comfortable that this is there. So um, in creating, you should feel comfortable in your space and not get stressed out. Um, all right, so I just wanna go over certain areas. So I wouldn't be completely finished in this uh, process here. I would probably slowly let it dry and slowly, I really wanna kind of understand how to deal with this area here. And so that would be a slow buildup of darks. And I'd really take the time because it's the mouth that is really important there. Um, and I really need to take some time to understand how to resolve, you know, get that expression. And a lot of it has to do with the shading and the shadow in her um, chin area. So I wanna make this a little darker, but I don't want it to look like a hole either. All right, so I'm gonna, we're almost done with our hour. So I'm gonna take the time to answer any questions. Um, the Liquitex White, I've used that, the Liquitex White ink, I've used that, I'm not a big fan of it. It's a little, it's not as opaque as this brand. This, um, Holbin is this brand. Um, so this has been, this is something I use a lot in my mixed media work, not my oil work at all, but my mixed media work. And it's, it sits in my creative space. Um, I do use the Liquitex ink for painting as well. And I might even include that in my watercolor study as well, because I love the vibrancy of ink, um, that the ink leaves. Um, yes. I do use a blow dryer. <laughs> I didn't want to use it here, but I would definitely, um, I would definitely use a blow dryer in between um, values, you know, in between. I would, I would add one layer, blow dry it, add another layer. I felt like the blow dry was just going to be too la loud um, in the class. So I tried to kind of just do a quick little study. Um, but yes, I would probably have a blow dryer handy to blow dry areas. I do, um, Ellen asked me, do I ever do pastel over my watercolors? Yes, yes, and yes. 
Um, I have a specific process that I do with pastels. I create an underpainting. I will do this whole um, underpainting using watercolor, allowing for some of this fun stuff. And then I will add uh, my layer of pastels. It's absolutely beautiful because you can allow some of that watercolor to show through, especially with portraits. Um, it really provides uh, uh, just this added glow and luminosity to your piece. So yes, I do. Um, and um, someone says off proportions. Well, it probably is off. The proportions are off. I'm just doing a study. So this is really me focusing more on understanding my subject. I'm not really focused on getting it right or making her look perfect. I'm really focused on understanding how to get to know my subject. And I, like I said, I will do um, maybe four or five of these. I'll do it over and over, just like I'll draw it over and over again. Um, and I will get it to the point where I'm feeling really comfortable with my subject. And I'm knowing, I know and understand how to resolve certain areas of the face that I might struggle with when I work on an oil painting. So yes, I'm not focused on proportion. I'm not focused on getting it right. I'm just focused on understanding, getting intimate with my subject, understanding her face and the relationships and the shapes, um, and just kind of feeling comfortable. So these are kind of like my warm ups um, before I really get into a serious painting. Um, and all right, so we are almost at the end. If there's any more questions here, I'm gonna change the screen so you can see me here. I really enjoyed creating with you. This was this went so fast. <laughs> And I would love to spend a couple more hours here doing some more studies and, and drawing and painting. And I would love to share taking this in to my easel and doing an oil painting with it and just kind of showing you. I would love to, um, but we're just here for an hour. And I really enjoyed kind of sharing my process with you and talking it through. Um, and I'm excited to share my class. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know what day it's coming up, but um, it's kind of similar to to what we did today a little bit. I'll be using a blow dryer in the class. Um, and there's definitely so many amazing artists that are in this 30 day challenge painting 30 portraits. So if you have not signed up yet, um, please do. You can use my code if you can see it there, 30F. 30D in my name, Krista, C-H-R-I-S-T-A. Definitely sign up. I am going to try my best to follow the challenge because there's a lot of artists in there that I absolutely love um, and I love learning from. So I want to learn a lot and I feel like these courses, these challenges and everything that Sketchy offers, um, you can learn so much, even if you're a pro or if you're a beginner, it doesn't matter where you are. So I am going to end it here. I'm going to post, I'm going to play around with her just a little bit more. I'm going to go get my blow dryer and really dry her. And I will post this uh, on Sketchy. I'd love to see all of your watercolor studies. I'd love to hear all the struggles you have with watercolor and how you solve them. And I will see you, I guess, when my class comes up in March. So thank you so much. And keep creating. <laughs>